KCAA. Robert Porter with the I Love San Bernardino County Radio Show on KCA NBC 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. We will talk politics, culture, and history. Today we have our guest host in the house. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing great. Antonio D. Miles here. D. Uh, Miles in the house. Yes, Antonio. And uh, um, but, uh, you show him off your shirt right there. Oh, yeah, we got the Empire, you know, the shirt, the brand. This guy helped made it come through possible. Jason, yeah. thank you. And uh, um, I have one of those shirts. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I made sure to get one of these ones because if I don't get a shirt like that, they're going to run out. Yes. Right? So yeah, yeah. He's yep. got the Carousel Mall right there with the, the, the oh, man. Oh. And was, oh, just, just absolutely incredible. So we're going to get into all this, all this cool stuff and uh, how you can buy a The Empire shirt, how you can buy a Carousel Mall shirt, how you can sponsor The Empire, how you can sponsor Wax Skateboards, for that matter. We are going to yeah. go into all of this today. We're going to have fun with it. And uh, But before we do that, we have to mention the sponsors because they actually, you know, have been keeping me alive for all this time. Uh, Celebrities Bar and <laughs> Grill, Max Zaire. Oh, thank you, Max and Zoe. I appreciate all you do. Um, head in there and and, and and spend some money. Get a mango margarita. Yeah, yeah. A I, mango I, margarita. I do get that. <laughs> that put me on yeah. game with that. Yeah, and they're actually good, but I, mine's mine yeah, virgin. Virgin, virgin. Yeah, virgin. Yeah, got you. Virgin. It's still good. Got it's you. still good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess um, I, I need to ask my girlfriend if I'm still allowed to say virgin on the air. Can I say virgin on the air? Got you. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, got once you. I check with her, then I'll be able to do it next time, maybe. Oh wait. <laughs> Hello. That's what you call no a brain fart? No. Yeah. You can say brain fart on the radio. I but not think. virgin? No, not. I, wait, maybe you can. Yeah. Well, well, there's like a list of words or something, maybe, but maybe we shouldn't say all. Maybe of those. untouched margarita. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, thank you, Max. Uh, head into celebrities. They got some good stuff. That their, their, their deal right now is like a lobster pizza thing, and oh, I, wow. I, I'm not I'm not totally sure about all that. But he says it's incredible. So I say go for it, go try it, and you know, you know, what do you usually get there? The chicken tacos are the best chicken tacos in SB, and yeah. but to me, it's not really a chicken taco. It's more like a wrap, but it's it's amazing. Whatever sauce or or uh, like condiment that he puts, he puts some type of like it's like a Greek type of uh, chimchurri kind of sauce, I guess. I don't know. It's delicious. It's it's hands down M one of the Max best. Max does have some really unique dishes. It's very he? good. I like yeah. that type of food. Yeah, he he all and it's all there's a lot of bar food there too. Yeah. And you want the bar stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but the chicken tacos yeah. just smack. Same thing with the fish tacos. I like their he's got a he's got a smash burger too, I know. Really? Like, I gotta I, try that. Yeah, everyone Green Shack's got smash I mean everyone, uh -huh. Jack in the Box, but nothing uh -oh. nothing to Chubsies so no, far, dude. I've not had anything like <laughs> close to Chubsies, but you know. Um, the loves the Nader. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, thank you uh, so much, uh, Max, and, and everything you do. And, and Green Shack, uh, Green Shack just uh, um, got robbed. What? Really? Um, I guess it was an inside job. Um, if you wow. want to, um, I don't, I don't know about mentioning those kind of things, but if you want to find more information about that, uh, um, uh, look on the um, the Green Shack uh, marketplace on Instagram. And uh, there's a there's a information and a profile and all that stuff right there. Uh, please please help them out because it's not fair. Yeah, you know? support Green Shack. They're a staple of our community for sure. And, yeah, uh, and yeah. I don't know how wow. many times I've gone in there and said, Manel, hey, um, do you think you could provide a, a sandwich for this uh, non for profit, or this yeah. uh, or for the police officers or for the firemen or, or whatever? Even one of our yeah. events. Remember yeah. that you brought you brought yeah. a big sandwich. Yeah, she <laughs> just just gets. It. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> she just gets it and she does it. Like, yeah. That is so awesome, and that's not free. It costs her money too, yeah. right? No, so definitely. Uh, help the green check. Check that out and see if we can find this uh, guy. The rumor is he might have went to Vegas, but uh, you know who knows? He might be hiding around here. So yeah. we can check that out. Um, uh, 
Stand out of the week. He's right here. Antonio D. Miles, stand out of the week. Wow. And uh, this is the reason for my madness. Uh, he works his butt off showcasing good things in San Bernardino and the Inland Empire, right? I mean, wow. how, how can you thank someone who does that all the time? Well, my little way is this. So stand out of the week. Thank you for, for helping um, showcase people like Jason right there. You know, I, I'm sitting there on Instagram flipping through. And I see a show and, and Jason's mug on there, right? <laughs> or uh, Terrence Stone. Yeah. Or, or, or and eventually I'm going to be on there too. We're working this out. Yeah. But to me, it doesn't matter about me. To me, I like to see every, you know, everyone else out there doing Because I always get on to talk. I get to talk all the time. But to hear other people that are doing good things in the community get to talk, wow. That is worthwhile. And the person who makes it happen... Right here, Antonio D. Miles. Thank you, San Bernardino Standout of the Week. And that is brought to you by uh, Benjamin Chavez and First Lineage Site Services. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all you do. They've been supporting me for almost, uh, uh, getting close to two years now. Wow, man, thank you so much for, uh, for, for showcasing all these different people every week. And it, it's just been a fun, Yanni's picked a couple sometimes, I've done some. And uh, man, you know, just to be able to give a little uh, recognition to those who deserve it, it was an awesome thing. So we're going to try this uh, nonprofit of the week. We're still working on trying to get a, a sponsor for that. We, we have a few tentacles out and a business of the week. Mm -hmm. So we talked to uh, my former co-host, uh, Jesse and uh, Morphin, and he may be interested. Maybe I should have said his name too loud on the radio. <laughs> he may be interested. It's already out there. Yeah, it's already out there. Doing a business of the week. So that might be cool, too showcase different businesses like Chubsies or wax skateboards or yeah. different ones out there that are just doing things and just need a little shout out right mm -hmm. so thank you so much Ben Chavez with First Lineage Site Services now one of our other great sponsors it be Yanni Lockert with Motivational Realizations and he has um, a sponsored this today uh, uh, these announcements for the Juneteenth Jam on uh, in Rialto at Ferguson Park on 619, uh, uh, 619 uh, 4 to 9 p.m. So at Ferguson Park in Rialto. And then the San Bernardino, Juneteenth Freedom Day at Cal State San Bernardino, 12 to 5 p.m. Zero, uh, I mean, zero, zero six. June 19th, <laughs> uh, 2024. So uh, two cool events. Um, the Cal State one, a little closer for me, should be a great time. Um, I know there are more Juneteenth events. So if you need to go to them all or you want to focus on one of the ones you went on before or whatever, uh, look on the events on Facebook and then also uh, on um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Usually if you follow Ipiani Locker, you'll get most of the information you need mm -hmm. when it comes to um, events in the community because this dude goes everywhere. In fact, yeah. currently is in Sacramento, uh, uh, you know, Fighting, fighting for good causes. So, cool. you know, uh, thank you. And I did see him on the beach yesterday. So <laughs> he, he might have, got, or maybe it was the day before, but he got onto the beach somehow. <laughs> and we all needed to go to the beach sometimes. You got to get and, your toes in the sand. Yes, and, and I, I got my toes in the, the, the river sand. A little bit different uh, vacation being in the river, but uh, I loved it. And I love that feeling of the constant current. Have you ever swam in a river? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My family owns a, a house out in Bullhead City, so oh. I've been going there since I was like, I'd say about eight the, or nine years the, old. The, the real wow. river that we all talk about. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful, the Colorado River. Yeah. just mm. and, and even up north, too. I've been up to some of the ones up north by Sacramento, and it's just gorgeous. Like, And it's so nice to go fishing, too. Oh, fishing. Um, where 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 we went uh, we went to Megalia and the one of the largest gold nuggets in the world was found there, right? So I got all excited, right? I, I thought I thought maybe Amy's mom was you know there's always a gold nugget story. That part. Yeah. Then I looked it up and it was real and the gold mountain's like right above her, and there's all these streams. I'm like, whoa, man! I didn't bring my gold pen. And then I'm like, man. So we we had to leave after two days. Um, and we went to Portola, and right there next to Iron Horse, where Dad lives, is Gold Mountain. Another, wow. another gold. I'm like, man, I didn't bring my pan. So you know how I like looking for gold. Yeah, next time I'm bringing my pan. But I didn't realize okay. there's so much gold up there up north. And then the Feather River comes down, 
lots of nuggets found in there. And but the water actually comes all the way down into the Silverwood Lake. Really. And then comes down into uh, Diamond Lake or Demagoni Lake down down in Hemet. So um, the the water from the Feather River comes all the way down. So I I didn't pee in the water, T. <laughs> oh, <Got you>. <laughs> Maybe I did. I don't know. It's I'm okay. Not, uh, uh, Hey, the the kids were in there downstream. a long time. But it's it going was, downstream. It's okay. <laughs> but it, it was it's going it was, to Silverwood. Yeah, <laughs> there's lots of sand for it to filter. But it, it was it was fun, anyways. The, the Feather River, that whole area, Northern California, is just a, a treat. Beautiful. Yeah. We did it on a budget team. I I know. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of that with uh, with uh, some of uh, Jason's trips on a budget. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How you can do? You can have fun yeah. locally. And, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. San just, Bernardino especially. Yeah. So, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do, Jason. Like, I mean, we've had you on here like seven times. I think three or four. Yeah, you've been yeah. on here a yeah. lot of times. Close. Yeah, close. Seven's close. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I. Is you sure yeah. it's three or four? Like, no, we're gonna no, have to count. Yeah. We probably have been a little bit more. We're gonna have to count this because there were some cannabis ones too. So you, yeah, you, we were talking about the weed uh, ones. Maybe you didn't remember. <laughs> Hilarious! Yeah, <laughs> you know, every time you kept on saying I sh I should have brought my pan, I kept on thinking like bring my pants. I'm like, were you wearing pants or what? <laughs> oh, no, no. D Damon Alexander wasn't wearing pants on the interview. What the hell? <laughs> he was, he was like all dressed up in a nice suit because he was running for election the first time. Uh -huh. And he like when he went to go stand up to shake my hand, he was wearing shorts <laughs> and but wearing like a suit top. <laughs> Got you smart. Yeah, that's the, the COVID hey, hey, days. Hey, 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 I <laughs> I would be remiss if I did not add to that story. Oh no! <laughs> because, because like he was in a hurry, so yeah. at least he came. Yeah. And, like I yeah. love when David comes up, but he also had a little bit of lasagna. On Damn. His, uh, on his, Damn. On his, so on like his, on his shorts. That, yeah, that's a classic story. <laughs> classic classic. But you know, he, he's a great comic. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. I remember going up in here like super baked out, and and uh, it smelled really, really, yes. really strong in here. <laughs> And Robert made a joke about him being like a former FBI agent or something like that. Yeah. It was so funny. The former federal agent. Yeah. yeah. ATF. Yeah. Yep. So we were like making jokes about it and stuff. And he was he was super funny about it too. <laughs> so uh, we we always have yeah. had fun on here. We always have a good time. It's been a long it's been a long road and and I was thinking about that today. How long it's been? Almost ten years of 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 trying to showcase local things in San Bernardino yeah. and. And in the Inland Empire in general, well, it, 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 it's weird. It's almost surreal. And to, team, and to have to pay for that team myself, right? Yeah. Figure out ways to make that happen. Because mm -hmm. that, that's, that's hard. It's like, very hard. When I first started, I had a, a producer that, that paid for my shows, right? The first couple ones. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, hey, well, well, you know, can you bring in some sponsors? And basically he was like, you have to bring in some sponsors, or you ain't gonna be on the show. Yeah. Oh, tomato. Yeah, that's what it gets to. Well, then you're like, whoa! So I ran out and got sponsors. Right and the, you know, how do you get sponsors? You know, how do you like find? Sponsors? You gotta be creative. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the producer's job to look for the sponsors? It's it's everyone. So it's like okay. so if you yeah. really want um, your business, your not for profit, whatever, to be successful, uh, it always helps to have someone there on your team. Right. Yeah. And uh, a, a good sponsor is like a teammate, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I always tell them. I say, hey, you're not just helping uh, San Bernardino and stuff like you're helping me. You're 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 not just helping yourself. Like if you're just coming here to help yourself, I don't want you to be my sponsor. Yeah. Uh, I I want you to get business, but I want you to understand that you're also helping San Bernardino. And if you're not representing San Bernardino in good, I wouldn't want you a sponsor either. So it's more of a give and take. That's why it's so hard for me to find good sponsors like the Green Check that will stick there with you for 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Because like not everyone's there for San Bernardino or the Inland Empire for the long haul, right? They will, they want their business there right away. Yeah, gotcha. and, and you will get sponsors that are, you know, you think they might be there for the long haul, whatever, but they just, you know, they, they really want to get to your core audience. Yeah, and right? then bounce. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. bounce, yeah. Imagine so, how cool it would be to get Amazon as a, oh, like as those a sponsor. Oh, like those would be so cool, but like, like you would expect them to run right in and, and help yeah. these small radios, the only, ro you know, smallest radio station, you know? Yeah. With but all it, the subsidies they get from the city. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard, like, it, 
I guess there's probably ways to get to that kind of grant money. Mm -hmm. you, we just got to research it. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's available for radio or not, but like I know they do help with some things. Yeah, and there's so many warehouses out here in the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey. I'm afraid that this stuff might disappear, team. Like, if you try to go on KCAL or uh, um, COLA, all of that stuff is very strict. You it's can't. Radio, yeah, correct? You, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you cannot um, just. You have some creative freedom, but not nearly what we have. Yeah, you can't say virgin on. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, okay. There's certain things you can't say. Certain radio you can't talk about. You know, businesses, all that stuff. So like, it real this this talk radio platform that KCAA gives us an opportunity to use is a great marketing tool, right? I've always told the management here, and I've been honest about it, is that my main business is not. I love San Bernardino County radio show. My main business is Robert Porter with I love San Bernardino as like kind of my saying, right? Mm -hmm. You can't own the love of San Bernardino. It just no. doesn't work, right? You can own the, the website. I do, right? <laughs> but that's about it, right? I mean, there's, and then like you, you could easily get I love San Bernardino org or I love San Bernardino whatever, right? Do you? So, yeah. I, you're not going to get them all, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and then Facebook lets you copycat. So then I realize I'm I'm really building the Robert Porter brand uh, with I Love San Bernardino and KCAA, right? And uh, we're all building together. Um, Jason's brand, right, helps my brand, right? So mm -hmm. Jason has made my shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Jason has made. Um, uh, my my mask during COVID. <laughs> I forgot about those. Right, right. So like you like wow, <laughs> the, the the things that you do to market are, are are different. Now he did ask to make a pen one time. I love San Bernardino pen. Yeah, I love pen. That that's the new oh, the that's pal. a new thing. I did I didn't okay that one, but like sometimes I wonder if I. Why didn't you it. okay it? Because I wanted more shirts instead. Uh huh. I love pals are. I'm telling you, yeah. they they sell so well. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the like. I, I, all my shirts are dated now, so I'm probably gonna have to make the next move, right? You know, because yeah. I've worn out. But because I wore them good, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I have one of those shirts, the Empire, right? Yeah. That you gave to me out of the kindness of your heart mm -hmm. to help promote your podcast with your marketing. That was made by Jason, mm -hmm. right? If you see team like how we're integrating uh, locals that are trying to do good things. And we're working yeah. together, right? Yeah. Jason definitely is not the most expensive shirt maker in San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. He works with you. And he makes sure that you don't feel like you got cheated. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, uh, I I came from, uh, well, you know. I have came from uh, literally just having to improvise a lot of my resources. And then once finally people started seeing... Uh, what I was doing and, and talent yeah exactly started seeing what was going on then they were like okay we believe in you just same thing with my events like you you know for years and you've also sponsored my events uh we do this skateboard comp competition um I'd say like twice a year over at Blair Park and uh it's completely 100 percent free um all the food drinks um everything is completely free we also give out uh free products and then we also uh, give out free boards, like for the kid who has the worst board in the park. And then also we give a board out to the kid who picks up the most trash, minus them taking out the trash in the trash can, of course, you know. Yeah. But, like, just to be able to do these type of things is awesome. And before I did, I was a little bitter because I was like, man, why aren't people here supporting me? People should be giving me this and giving me that. But then once I humbled myself and I realized, you know what, I got to show people what i'm doing and once people see it they'll love it you know so once i started doing that and i'm not a typical person that likes to like film doing good things and good good deeds and stuff like that i have, I have to we have to do it to him yeah right? yeah yeah so it's like i really am very difficult about myself like that because it comes from the heart for helping other people but it's so cool to see these kids and um like uh, before, like I said, it, it was like just same thing with you. Everything came out of my pocket. I remember going in there and I was telling um, Antonio the same same thing that I had is there's been times where I've only had a couple of dollars in my pocket, but I knew that if I go over to that event with my T-shirts and I bring over their free hot dogs and sodas, that some of these kids will support me, you know, and they did, 
you know, and they still do. That's what's so awesome about it now because a lot of the footwork that I planted 10 years ago, it's uh, the I'm, I'm eating the fruit from the trees. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and as, as time goes on, some of the fruit trees go away. Yes. Some stay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it, it, it really hurts when a, when a fruit tree runs out of fruit. Yes. That is the hardest thing that I've dealt with in business. Yes, that's that's <laughs> devastating. Yeah. So like I had a fruit tree that provided a lot of fruit and then I had a falling out with that person and there's no more fruit, right? So that was half my business. So you had to restart. We work we little by little it, just right? working we, it up again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing. It doesn't always have to be a falling out. It could just be a uh, bad bad business at the time. Mm-hmm. A lot of businesses right now are are hurting. Yeah. Why? All the stimulus money is slowly just going away. away. Hilarious. And then, and the then, PPP? Uh, it didn't do. It didn't really disappear. It just went to all the rich people because we yeah. spent it at McDonald's and everything. You know, like yeah. that's eventually where it all ends up. And then yeah. they complain. But anyway. yeah. But, but uh, so that's running out. So as that money's running out, we're just gonna have to realize that there's not gonna be as much sponsorship and things like that. And especially inflation, that hurts a lot too with the small businesses I've noticed because a lot of them, uh, they've gotten hurt a lot. And like even Chubsies for instance, they're such a good brand and their prices are super, super, very, I say reasonable. fair. Reasonable, yeah, yeah, totally Compared reasonable. for like a, like, cause I went to LA to go get a smash burger and a smash burger out there was like, I, I want to say I paid like thirteen dollars for a smash burger out there, and it didn't have bacon on it. <laughs> and I mean, it was a good burger, but to be honest, it, Sma- Chubsies is like way better. You know what I'm saying? Oh man! Yeah, and f- and for them to keep You're making me hungry, we can't eat Chubsies yeah. right now. They're closed up Mondays, but tomorrow I'll go for, to Chubsies. Hilarious! Yeah, for them to keep that pricing, I think is just so awesome because they know that the city. We don't got a lot of money here, you know, and for them to to offer a product that would normally be in a fancy place like L.A., Santa Monica, all these other places, to have that type of product in here and then also to have it be like one of the best in Southern California, it's a big, big thing, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Well, what I wanted to say was about when you're talking about, you know, your fruit tree dies off, it's like, that's why it's important to plant many seeds to have many trees. Yeah. Right? Like a garden, which you should know, which I know you know about, right? Gardening yeah, yeah. and, and uh, flowers and plants. I love that saying. Uh, mine is a uh, being like uh, I love oak trees and in Native American it, using acorns and stuff. I like if I plant a thousand acorns, I'll get one or two grand oaks that will love the history of San Bernardino, and, mm-hmm. and those acorns will be planted in the youth's mind and the, like the, as our future for history. So that I love the fruit analogies. Thank man. you. They're just you know they're awesome. Uh, it, it like to me, I really really love the city because I've seen, I've witnessed a lot of the the uh, talent in the skateboard industry. I mean the skateboard community in San Bernardino. So it's like, to me that hits home. You know what I'm saying? And there's been times where I've gotten upset and been like, oh well, why doesn't the city support me to do this or why doesn't the city do that? And eventually I just was like, you know what, I'm going to do it myself. And if the city gets upset about it, which I hope they don't, it is what it is. Because I know deep down what I'm doing is is helping these kids and teaching them a different way instead of uh, gangbanging and, and all that other stuff. That's why, like, when they asked me uh, just advice on how to start a business, because some of them would, were asking me how to start a clothing company. And I was just giving them little tips in here. Because to me, it, for them, it's the same thing as the tree analogy. I plant those seeds, and eventually, th- just by helping them, it's not me doing all the work, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But just by me helping them, it, it uh, raises them to a higher, higher standard. Like, um, like Vincent Gomez, I remember, he, I think you met him a while back, but he used to skate for wax skateboards. And um, when I stopped with the skate company, um, we remain good friends still to this day. And uh, the other day, I don't know if you know this, but um, well, not the other day. It was last year. He uh, he got sponsored by Guess Jeans. Oh, you know the cool. big. That's a big company. Yeah, you know, yeah. huge. Yeah. So what they did was they put him and the skate team on the billboard in Hollywood. I think it was Hollywood Dope. and Vine or something like that. Dope. So a little kid from San Bernardino is is on a billboard yeah he's not a kid anymore he's yeah. uh, to me he's always he's gonna kid, be a kid because yeah, i yeah. like he's such a good person you know but it's like 
just to see that it, it brings a lot to me you know to see that it's just uh that's a feel good story. it's very good humbling yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like for him and then the other people too it's just to see great things come out of it you know what i'm saying and then like some people uh uh, it, it's sad that they they didn't go the way um, the other kids went, but I feel like uh, I hope that at least most of them understand what I'm trying to say, especially when it comes to uh, violence and drugs and gangs and stuff like that. Because if you pick up a skateboard, it's gonna it's gonna keep you away from a lot of those things, you know. And, and there's other things, physical good things. Yes, I've watched yes. kids get in the best shape of their lives. Yes. They're like, yeah. there's this one kid that I always remember on, when I was was younger, like he would drive down the street and he, he, on his bike and he was really, really tubby. And then he started skateboarding. You know, and I always noticed that because I've always been a skater, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like, he just slimmed right up. All of a sudden, man, he's all in everywhere. Like, you know, I'm like, wow. It's the best. Had an incredible girlfriend and everything. <laughs> yeah. He just like changed his whole life because he's, you know, started yeah. skating. There's another kid named Ryan Carell. I want to give him a shout out. Uh, Ryan, um, he uh, sponsored by Baker's yeah, drive through yeah. out of all oh, people. Shout out to Ryan, you know, yeah. so it's like, and he used to come to our skate events and stuff. He, uh, I didn't get him on the team, but I mean, literally, I'd say like, I want to say like six or seven competitions we've had, he's won them. Like, he's an amazing skateboarder. He skates for DGK. And uh, Baker's drive through and I believe Powell or, or Bones uh, Wheels. Like the old school company, old Powell, school. Powell Peralta. Yeah, yeah I, I, I couldn't even, I don't think I could afford that board. Oh, because dude. He, he had the, the, the skull. With the dagger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had a Rob Rob skull. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish I still had that. Had the monster board. Yeah, oh, <laughs> mine was white. I'm not green. It's, it's so crazy because the first time I ever met Ryan, um, he was like hitching a ride with one of the cats that I knew. Shout out to T. And it's so crazy to see him now driving his own car, getting all yeah. these sponsors. And like to shout out to like V Money. Uh, Same thing. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy because I think there's there's so many people who came from the Inland Empire that we don't realize that are big people like mm -hmm. Hip Boy. I think um, Travis Barker came from the Inland Empire, right? He came right? from Fontana. Yeah, Fontana. Right? Yeah. You know, um, I think the guy named Lakeish, he's a famous actor, came from R Victoryville. So I feel like people need to remember, like, hey, there's a lot of amazing people that came from the Inland Empire. And, and, and the, the next big star, it could be here. I mean, yeah, the gentleman that yeah. just won the Heisman Trophy, he came from San Bernardino. Exactly. Like, Daniels, yeah. That exactly. is, like, that exactly. is so freaking cool. I was telling my dad about that. I was like, dude, like... That's a big deal, you know? Yeah. We got good stuff. So, yeah. uh, so, so Yanni was telling me about your make, you might make a, a skateboard for him or something? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so like, uh, I was just wondering if you'd ever thought about putting that arrowhead right there on a skateboard. Yeah, we could do something like that. Um, because, uh, because I just got some vans for my lady. Mm hmm and she took the picture of the my era, and, and she put, put it on the vans. On the vans! That's Can cool. you believe that? That's dude? super cool. So I have vans with an arrowhead on it. I just thank you, Amy. It's very special to me. I'm yeah. afraid to even wear them, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still kind of cool. Like, like what, what were you gonna do for Yanni? Um, motivational realizations board or? Well, originally, like like I said, uh, I stopped doing boards. I only do clothing for right now. Um, but I am going to be doing, uh, limited releases of boards now, <laughs> you know, I was talking about it. Um, the first release we're going to do is with, uh, Chubsies. I'm not supposed to tell everybody, but whoops, whoops. <laughs> uh, wax skateboards and Chubsy skateboard coming soon. Um, Stay tuned. We're gonna be having that probably. I saw the collab shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna, we're dropping. I, I was I did that collab. I didn't have that collab shirt that I did with Jason. Yeah. I am so happy that it's moving to the yeah. next level. Yeah. With the Chubsies. Yeah, we're doing we're doing a, a sample. We we did some samples already for it, but um, we're gonna try to re we're gonna try to release it, but we're gonna do pre order only because like. Is he gonna put them up like in the? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna oh, put them all up so like that, cool. and I also gave him a wax bar too to put up there. But um, after that is done, then I was telling um, him that I was going to make him a custom board because he wanted just something to hang up on the wall. So what I was going to do is I was going to um, get the get the heat transfer just to just to do a heat transfer on it for him, just okay. as a wall piece, not something to ride because usually I, I would just get him silk screened. That's yeah. usually my preference when it comes to yeah, uh, I wouldn't want printing to wax boards. I just 
like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Know, we could make something like that for maybe sure. We could talk Victor and putting the arrowhead one in there. Too. Yeah, I, absolutely. I'd love to see an arrowhead in there, or at least a picture of the arrowhead from out in front there. Yeah, no, I I really like working with Chubsies a lot. I'm the um, I'm the he calls me the creative director of Chubsies because <laughs> yeah, I do uh, I do all their uh, graphic work and stuff definitely. for them. So I it's mean, like you, you you gotta understand, team. He's he like takes a picture and puts it on the computer. Like he can draw a picture himself, but he puts it on the computer. Yeah, that's like not easy to do. Yeah, I mean, no, nah, it's it. I have like at least five thousand dollars worth of editing equipment, like for for uh, video editing or or uh, computer Adobe Illustrator, all of those different types of programs. I really really enjoy um, being like that, like going with certain companies that that uh, have the kind of same mindset as me, and uh, working with them. To, to establish the, their layouts or, or establish branding in a way. I really enjoy doing that now. So I've been working with a couple different companies, like establishing branding and layout for them and stuff like that. Like with Chubsies, I do uh, all, I'm pretty much their merchandise artist. So I do all the merchandise. I also did all the, uh, the artwork that's on the, you know, the collage that they have in the front right yes, there. It's I like, I had such a blast working on that thing. Um, but yeah, just that's that's my main thing right now is doing that. You see, you see this artist, and then traveling, look at that, yes, look at and then that. traveling too. Like I love yeah. traveling on a budget. Yeah. That's my new thing. Like oh, you were saying, we're gonna get in that traveling on a budget. Yeah, I love it. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. But like, yeah. let me see. Yeah. being an artist, and he, this guy's got a smile on his face, dude. <laughs> yeah, like talking about like it's it's nice when you have someone who believes in your work. Yes. And like you know, that's that's just awesome, dude. That's the How best like part. partnership. Thank you, Chubsies. That's yep. the best part. Is is like Victor, he understands like my ideas. So it's like when I pitch him an idea, he's like, "Oh, dude, that's a great idea. Run with that shit," you know. So then I'll do it. I'll give him a layout and a mock up, and he's just like, "Oh my god, this is amazing," you know. And same thing with the board. I'm not gonna release the board uh, layout yet because we're still deciding. Because we got like, I designed like ten different boards. And we're only going to pick one. So I really wanted to make sure, like, we had all these different options instead of just going with one thing and doing like that. Like, I'm kind of OCD when it comes to that. So if I have a project, I like to do multiple different designs and layouts, whether it be a shirt, a skate deck, or a hat, so that I can get an idea of exactly what I want to put out. Mm -hmm. And the, the majority of things that I do is listen to people when it comes to that because a lot of my the people that ride for me, that rode for me for my skateboard company they gave me a lot of the ideas that that i use for a lot of my stuff because i would go to them and say hey how does this look and they would be like you know jay i'm not really liking this one can we change it up with this or maybe add uh this color to this color and just by having those people not be yes men's and actually tell me uh hey you know what this is what i think you know it it made me more uh successful in what i'm doing just by uh, being able to handle uh, positive criticism, you know what I'm saying? Or even people's ideas or inputs, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, when they see certain things, they're like, oh my God, that's cool. Like, that's so yeah. cool. Like, I didn't even think it was like, going to come like out the, like, like that. The shirt. Like oh, the yeah. Shirt. yeah. Yeah, this one was a really, really cool shirt to do. And uh, close in the dark. Yeah, I made it glow in the dark because I figured, hey, you know what? Why not, like, put a dead horse. With like a marigold pole and make it like a like you could wear it Halloween kind of. That's yeah. what I was thinking yeah. Halloween yeah. for sure. It would be yeah. a good party shirt. Definitely. I, I thought about it yeah. like going to concerts because that was my idea. When I went to a concert, I seen like uh, these metal type of death metal shirts, and I really like those type of uh, designs, designs and stuff. They're very yeah. simple. One one color white with a black shirt. But then once I I started realizing, oh, you know what? Like, wouldn't it be dope to do, like, a Thrasher type of t-shirt but for Carousel Mall? You know what I'm saying? Because the mall is done for. It's it's gone. You know what I'm saying? And I've all... And I liked... Uh I liked uh, uh, the Romolo. Outfitters. Mm -hmm. The Outfitters. Romolo, shout out to him because he's an amazing guy. He, uh, he does a lot of cool stuff for the city. And I was really inspired because I bought a couple of shirts from him. And I also... Yeah, he's got good work. I liked yes. all the Carousel Mall stuff because he even made a bag, like designed an actual mall bag. And I got it. And it's like, I have it in my toy room. I have a whole room dedicated with 80s toys. But like, I loved his design so much. And I was like... Like, I really liked it. I didn't want to bite off it or anything like that. I wanted to kind of do my own thing where it was like, 
the destruction, the aftermath, because everything's all nice and pretty in '80s, which I love. But then it's like the other side of like the destruction of our memories, kind of like nostalgia kills, like how I always say, yeah, you know, yeah. like the nostalgia of all the stuff from when we were children and then having to face reality because we can't hide from that that comfort blanket anymore. It's you know gone. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. gone, you know? So, so um, Antonio, how, how did you meet Jason? Can you tell us a little bit about that? And uh, um, how did you find out? Yeah, sure that so... Before I forget, I want to say this thing. Okay. I think it would probably be a good idea. It's two things. And, and, and just so you know, please cut in whenever you want. You are co-host on this show. Yeah. You can say whatever you wish. You know. Yeah, just jump right in. I, you know, I like to let people speak. Yeah, no, I know Definitely. you do, but like, we, we, yeah. we, we, we're talk so That's right. That part. That part. I'm that part. Yeah, yeah, that Robert part. be on the phone for like 40 minutes, yeah. me and him both. Hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, so yeah, two things I wanted to mention. I think... Maybe a good idea would be for limited edition skateboards. Maybe a I Love San Bernardino limited skateboard. That would be a really awesome collab, That'd and I would totally be down to do something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And then I was also thinking, you mentioned the Arrowhead, and that's part of San Bernardino as well, no? Or is it part of Arrowhead? No, so like uh, San Bernardino County. Huh, County. So, so, so I always say, you know, like, hey, Fontana, guess what? <laughs> You're part of San Bernardino. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the actual city itself ends at Air Arrowhead Springs. So... Arrowhead Springs is encompassed into the city, right? It was done. But that is currently owned by San Manuel, which is under the process of turning it into reservation land. Got you. Yeah. So eventually it won't be in the city anymore, but technically still is right now. Got you. Because I was going to say that might be also a nice little collab for I Love San Bernardino's using that arrowhead symbol since it means so much to mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and putting it part of I Love San Bernardino. Yeah, those, those two things I was thinking about. That's like... The, the arrowhead is like the bell for Riverside. I, I ah, how I see it as, you know what I'm I saying? Like, that. like, I like that. Like, because you see all all of the people that rep Riverside, and that they have the bell tatted on them. And people out here, I've seen so many tattoos of the uh, the arrowhead because it's it's got a very big meaning out here, you know. Got you. I, I was th I was thinking I need to do, I need to get a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to get a tattoo. I need to get a tattoo. I need, I've been wanting to get. Well, you know, I've had surgery on my chest, right? So I have a scar. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought it would be super cool to have the picture, uh, have the arrowhead, how it normally sits naturally with that scar as the crack. Oh, oh interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But I mean, like, that's, you know, I'm working on it. Yeah, that. dangerous. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so to go to the question about how I met Jason, I think, I believe I met Jason first at the event that Chubsy's, uh, that Romola was throwing and where Chubsy's old spot was. I believe that's the, that yeah, the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a, an event that Romolo was throwing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and I was looking for a spot to set up. I think I needed, like, a spot. And Jason was like, hey, man, I got room. You can set up with me, blah, blah, blah. And then... Um, Jason is an old hand at all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the, yeah, the, the, weed, the weed event we did? Yeah. I, 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 I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're but, good, man. You're but, good. But um, we, we did, I did this weed event, and I had a booth there. And uh, I knew the, the owner there, and, and Robert was like, hey, man, is there any way you can get me a boot? Just I don't want to sell anything. I just want to pass out information. So I literally went over there, and I met with the guy that actually throws the event because I knew him really, really well. And I said, hey, bro. Uncle Ronnie's, you, right? Yeah, Uncle Ronnie. I was like, shout out to Uncle Ronnie, yeah. too. Uncle, Uncle Ronnie, Ronnie Jerky. Yeah. Man, Uncle Ronnie's, yes, Uncle Ronnie's amazing, amazing yeah. edibles, award-winning edibles. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, award-winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah award-winning. Yes. I, Ooh. I definitely. Uh, he was like, he was like, tell him to load the stuff up and and set up over here. I was like, dude, this is so awesome. Like, and it was cool too, cause like the event was huge. Like. Burner was there. Uh, Be Real was there. It was over there at the Orange Show, but like mm -hmm. that, was, that was one of the last of the real. It was the last yeah. good one. And actually, what was cool about it too is Nipsey Hustle was there that event, and oh, uh, yeah. TMZ made a big deal out of it because not not Uncle Ronnie, but it was another guy that was there that that kind of didn't pay the artist or something. Mm. But the guy that was in, involved in the talent, not the actual event. It was like involved with the talent or something. I guess wow. he didn't pay the guy. I mean, he didn't pay Nipsey Hussle, so Nipsey Hussle in the game left early, and then, uh, and, and then like they made a big deal out of it on TMZ. I, I forgot what happened, but yeah, it was like, what I, the heck? Yeah, yeah, it ended up that. Uh, yeah. The bad part. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of good events over there. A lot of good events. <laughs> like, like I said, San Bernardino is so awesome with the transit system that we have, and with just events in general. I know there's not a lot of weed events anymore because of High Times putting that embargo on everything. 
I don't Explain, know. Explain. Talk about, about that. that. Talk about that. Um, what? High times. I think it was like maybe I want to say like. It was before COVID. I know that. It was like around 2019 or 2018. It was in the newspaper as well. Um, that High Times went to the Orange Show and said, hey, we don't want you to throw any cannabis events for except our events. Oh, and so for snaps. the wild, for like I'd say a couple years until COVID hit, no cannabis events were there except for the High Times uh, cannabis cups. And then once COVID hit, they didn't have any more uh, cannabis events over there from, wow. from that I've seen wow. at least. Yeah, you know? I haven't seen it. It used to, wow. it used used to, to be like, be, we're going to make the cannabis capital of the world because we it were. Is. It is. We it was. were. Yeah. Wow. It was. And, wow. They, and it got stolen from us just like everything else, man. It, like yeah. San Bernardino starts it and then, you know, yeah. McDonald's goes in uh, Illinois. They could have easily know. just set it up. It, it would have yeah. not been an issue at all from the get-go if they would have done things right because... They get backfired because they were going to get sued by Captain Jack's because Captain Jack's got grandfathered in. So he, they were the only cannabis spot in San Bernardino. And then what happened was is that Mr. Valvedia <laughs> reeks like Parmesan cheddar. <laughs> reeks like Parmesan cheddar. Had to, had to go in there and pocket everything. So what he did was That's he did it. a deal with High Times behind everybody's back. And uh, High Times pretty much did a pay to play to get their cannabis license, you know. And thank God they went bankrupt, so haha. Ha. But it should have been, <laughs> it should have been people a, from a San lot, Bernardino. A lot of those comp- med men. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them are going belly up. Yeah, because what what they do is they'll they'll get all their. A lot of these people, Robert, are trust fund babies, and a lot of uh, you know those type of they don't yuppies. really know what they're doing. Yeah. So oh, what they'll do? No, no, they do know what they're doing. What they're doing, and I'm gonna say it out here because I know I'm gonna spill the tea. But what they're doing is they are selling their packs out in the back door, back door in all the packs, and then taking a loss on the business and closing it down, just like how corporate America does with most of the shit. Um, Excuse me, sorry. Oh, did you get that? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah Virgin. It's, most. It's only it's only a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine. We're Jeez, just, sorry, just, sorry. No, that's. <laughs> <laughs> scared and paranoid. Got, <laughs> I, I've done worse in like. You'll have to search the archives for that one. That the time that he wasn't in there. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, but just completely different. No, I want to ask you guys. Yeah. What, what did you guys heard about the Orange Show curse? Oh god! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you don't want you, you really want to you want to bring this to me like so I made a big deal about it about a year ago, a big deal. Okay. It, can you explain for people who may not know okay. what the orange so show there, is? So there is a curse on the orange show that is supposedly stems from a burial ground mm-hmm. on the orange show property. Um, there was there was cremations and bones found on the property, right? There was that. So there, that is technically true, right? Um, the, the story is that Sam and Will or a, a group of natives cursed them for building on that um, building on the native land. grounds, right? The sacred land. Then mm-hmm. also, uh, the curse is associated with rain. Every single orange show, right? Mm-hmm. So I grew up with this. My grandparents telling me about it, right? The Indians cursed the orange show. They would always say that, right? Mm-hmm. But there was also another story about gypsies cursing the orange show for rain. Double curse. Yeah. So I was like. Where did this stem from and, you know, like, why is this, you know, why are these minority groups being called witches in my head, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Because if Native Americans want to say that they practice some kind of cultural thing, they can say that. I don't mind. But if someone says, they're putting a curse on the orange show. <laughs> to me, that old time it's way ignorant. of doing things is not appropriate. Now. Yeah, it's ignorant. Mm-hmm. So Robert, you know, not really woke kind of thing, but just wanting to correct the history, he said, I'm going to look through the newspapers and try to find the first instance mentioning the curse on the orange show. Well, it's not until modern times. Right, Mm -hmm. what happened was they were having all these like carnival barker things. Like, if it rains, the Indian curse, you win a car, or you win the the, (laughs) you win the pool. 
right? So it was a carnival barker that built it up. That's why everybody knew about it. Now, there is some mention it, uh, of it. Of I've heard that some Seminoles have talked about that. They may have grown up with it, too. I don't really know how they feel about ta talking about it. You have to totally ask them how they feel about that curse or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But me knowing that it was also said about the gypsies, right, too, like at the time, like, and I guess that's an inappropriate term as yeah, well. Yeah, right? who would consider the gypsies at that time? Um, yeah. The, the, Ro the Romanians that would come here, the Roma. You've heard of the Roma? Yeah. Yeah. So they Eastern would come Europeans. and they would uh, have their uh, um, their caravans with, with, with wagons and they would move around. And a lot, oftentimes they were moved out of San Bernardino areas um, discriminatory. This is like the 1800s? Uh, uh, in, in the 1900s. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, like the beginning. Yeah. Beginning. Okay. So we, uh, so this, this history is, is sad. It's scary. It, it, it's it's kind of like a little bit of scary, but not really. I don't know what it is. Like, it's like a curse. Cause, so this curse is scary, but they make it into a fun thing. Oh, it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. uh, several times it has not rained. And they're actually, even look at the farmer's almond out. It's like, almanac, it's like a... Um, 60% of the time it's rained or it hasn't rained or something like that. So there's a, like, it's not even close the amount of times. And last year, this year right now, it didn't rain. It didn't, yeah. <laughs> but last I, pro year I promise you, yeah. <laughs> as the year goes on, people will remember that it rained. Yeah. They just automatically do. So I put this post out trying to fix it. I had all the San Bernardino historians Attacking me. I don't even get on San Bernardino Remember When anymore. The history, history uh, group. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's a good history group. Join it. Please do. But I don't get in there no more because <laughs> I felt so jaded by all these people wanting to protect this history that we can't prove. The Orange Show curse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like in, as an archaeologist, I want to have some provable history. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, you know, I don't want and, and people coming to me on the side, on the side saying, Robert, you're going to take this away from us? This is all we got. I'm like, no, it's not that's all, all we got. That's all we got? That's not all we got. That is not, that's all you uh, learned. Uh, <laughs> so so I want to, uh, so that's I did so say, to him, all we got is a piece of history that's a bit racial. Yeah. Uh, right? You know, and that's, no, 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 that's not appropriate. But, but you know, if the carnival barkers, maybe they'll start it back up. Oh, I don't know. And it will be a, you know, a, the, the, the curse of San Bernardino just because we have bad politicians sometimes. You know? I, I think that's more more yeah. accurate yeah. than okay. it's raining like it. every year. It's, it's, it's going to rain like on it. the city meetings until we start getting some improvement, right? That yeah. where, where it's nice in those meetings and I want to go to them. Yeah. You know, like, I've taken a break because they were very nice. There's things going on in our meetings sometimes that just made me feel like I didn't belong and like uh, I felt bad and it yeah. it just it, I didn't even want to share positivity there because I didn't even want to be part of the process yeah right no, they don't want anybody to be a part of the process because then they could pass stuff more easier yeah they, it was just they were arguing and uh, and there's racial components to some of yeah. the stuff and that's mm -hmm. not a place where uh, the I excel I excel in places where I bring people Unity. together yeah. yeah like in that situation I just want to run away it yeah. just makes me feel like like I don't belong. And so, this is the money yeah. elected officials you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Wow. How, uh, this is maybe, uh, I'll ask it anyway. So how do you, since I feel like you're really involved with like what's going on politically in San Bernardino, you're the commissioner, of, right? Chairman of the Arts and Historical yeah, President. Yeah. Um, how has our current mayor been doing since she's been elected? So unfortunately for Helen, right, Mayor Tran, mm -hmm. you know, she came in to a situation where that the mayor the already like like kind of muddied the waters major. Like okay. he, he like mm. let a big old fart and then she walks right into it, right? Yeah. She brand new to politics as yeah, well, right? Yeah, yeah. So like you just like you, you gotta give her some space. And then also to, to have a baby, uh you know, like right during this time, it's gotta have definitely has to have her time right yeah watching her maneuver that has made me happy because mm -hmm. i see the baby and that ming's family and san Bernardino needs family they and need we need that kind of 
atmosphere. Image, yeah. yeah. And at first I wasn't know I didn't know how I would feel about it to be honest, but now I do and I like it. Yeah, when I saw her at Chubsy's, I got to shake her hand and actually meet her because I never met her before. Mm -hmm. I met everybody else from the swamp, but but she <laughs> from uh, the swamp you call him? <laughs> yeah. Well, ben, Ben's different. Ben's a great yeah, ben, guy. Yeah, Ben's a amazing cool. guy. He's, he's the rose from the swamp, or what? Uh, he, he, he's, he, he, to I, me, I like he, all of them individually. Yeah, me too. It's I just when they gotta get give them all. together. Yeah. It's the problem. It's a swamp when yeah. they get together. Like uh, them individually, like like Robert said, they're they're amazing. Damon's amazing. Yeah. Sandra's amazing. Be she's good people. Yeah, she's yeah. been at my house before. Like they're yeah. good people, but it's just when they get together, it's just the it's just like watching a a, a Jerry Springer episode <laughs> or something. You. you know, <laughs> Jerry, yeah. Jerry. What, what are we looking at? Four minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Antonio Miles, thank you for coming on yeah. here. And uh, thank you. I I, I want. To in the future, I want to have a show where you invite the guests and everything, and, and I'm just a co-host, and you know, me and Yanni will be a co-host. So, in the future, we're, we're gonna we'll, we'll we'll I'm gonna talk to Yanni about it, and we'll plan out a, a day, and, and that will be like a time we'll have you come in, and you'll just whoever you want to pick. So you maybe start thinking about it a little bit. Or, I'll just or, bring bring Jason back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do that anyways. I like talking <laughs> yeah. about everything, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah, I, I was thinking more like. Try for a guest that you you, you know you, you have a hard time getting right. Maybe he doesn't do a normal time. Right? He can't do a time. Like I have a hard time with getting Mr. Ramos in here because he has he's can't do Mondays very well. Right? Mm. It just doesn't work out well. Right. So maybe there's someone like that for you. I don't know. But uh, we'll work that out. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Go to the Empire. Tell us how to get a hold of the Empire and go watch it right now. Uh, you can go on YouTube, The Empire, T-H-E-E, -E, Empire Podcast. You can also go on Instagram, same thing. And uh, we're also doing a, 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 you choose the price for the shirt right now in honor of Juneteenth. So we're giving shirts away. You choose the price and we'll get it to you guys. Awesomeness. Thank you for showcasing San Bernardino, standout of the week here. Thank you for um, the standout of the yeah, week option. Yeah. I, I, I just want you to understand how me and Yanni appreciate you and, mm -hmm. and, and, and and like, it's I don't mutual. think it should be competition between us co all us hosts and stuff. Like y Yanni has this vision of bringing everybody together, right? Yeah. Because we can all learn from each other, and I've always been about that. And and I think that that if like you know you having me and Yanni and, and Jason on your show, and we we cross platforms and YouTube and TikTok and you know, dude. All it's going to equal is better stuff yeah. for San Bernardino. There's enough for us all to win. Yes. That's all I was believing. Let's do it, Jason! Yeah, yeah buddy! Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I want to thank uh, uh, Eric uh, back there, our engineer. <laughs> He's uh, always working hard and with his, uh, with, with, you got a Hawaiian shirt on. Gotcha. Did you guys hear that meow? That was weird, wasn't Did it? Did you meow? We, we got a cat in here now? <laughs> The cat in the station. Yeah, yeah. A, a pussy cat. Oh, uh, you can that, say that. that. You can wait, say that. You can say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a technical term for a cat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you just can't say moist. <laughs> you can't say moist. I like cakes that are moist. <laughs> hey, people, people get triggered by moist. I don't I know. know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Dick Tracy is one of the best inspectors ever. You yes, know? He, with the yellow hat, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And we will end that with, this is Robert Porter, Antonio Miles, and Jason Lowell with the I Love San Diego County Radio Show, and we all out of here! here.